and I uh, want to welcome you uh, to Kenya, so Karibuni Sana, so we're very glad that you're here, and I want to tell you that I am the least qualified person in this room uh, to, to be talking uh, about uh, any topic, because I stand here and sit here among giants, and, and I really mean that, that's not just trying to, as I would say in the United States, kiss up to you, uh, but I, I really believe that, because we have people who are here who have... Uh, uh, have been at this task uh, much, much longer than I have, and, and I, I have great respect for you. And so I thank you for, uh, for your service uh, in the places where, where you are assigned, where God has called you, uh, has equipped you, and is using you. And so I'm, I'm grateful to be able to, to meet, your, uh, meet you in person. Uh, I've heard many things about many of you, and many of you have actually received an email from me. Uh, and so I hope that I have, I have done uh, a, a, a decent task of representing you well and telling God's story uh, through you and your institutions. And so um, if, if I do not, uh, then we can talk later, uh, and I will apologize and, and plead for forgiveness. But uh, I am very grateful for this opportunity to talk about uh, the heritage that Baptists have left, the mark that they have made, uh, the footprint and fingerprints that we see all over this continent. Uh, and uh, being a, a new person to the field, it's easy to see uh, the, the markings and the foundations as well as the formulations. And I chose that word very carefully because uh, at first I was thinking of formations. You know, we, we are forming things. And so we come in and we lay foundations uh, as missionaries, as, uh, especially when it comes to those that, that put forth the effort and the, uh, and the, the commitment to establishing uh, the seminaries where we are, regardless of that, whether they came from the United States or they came from your own country, the initiative was there, uh, the calling was there, and so therefore uh, there were people, Baptists, who laid foundations, and we are building upon them, but we also see that they formed things. And I was having a recent conversation with Kevin uh, about the fact that what, one of the things that we have observed here in our neck of the woods uh, is that there was a generation uh, that, that went to seminaries that were started uh, by uh, Southern Baptist missionaries in particular, and we see that they did very well at embracing the forms. Uh, they, 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 they grasped the forms, and so they are distinctives that are very Baptistic. And so to, to say that this is what it means to be a Baptist, a lot of times it has to do with the forms of our worship, the forms of our church buildings, and the forms of what happens inside of the order of, of worship, as well as the ministries that we see taking place in and through the church. Uh, and so, unfortunately, sometimes we also face the reality that there's another generation that maybe has not exactly uh, embraced the forms May we see, we, we have to be honest and see that uh, we, we have a flavor of Bapticostalism in many of our Baptist churches. Uh, we have a little bit of an identity crisis, and we've already heard uh, allusions to that in, uh, in the first two speakers of this morning. And there are all kinds of factors to that, but one of the factors might be, as, as Dr. Rogers uh, was sharing with me uh, one day, and that is maybe what happened was, there was a generation who embraced the forms, but they didn't necessarily fully embrace, or maybe they didn't fully understand uh, the reason for the forms, the theological foundation. And so some of our wazé, as we would say here, our, our elders, maybe they sit back in those meetings and they don't correct the young ones when they see the forms are not based upon a good foundation in the Word of God. And so our heritage is a mixed bag of sorts. There are very great things to, uh, to celebrate, and then there are lessons to be learned uh, when we talk about that. So that's why I really wanted to, to start things off in this session talking about we're going to celebrate the, and look at the foundations, but not just the formations, but the formulations. Because that word formulation has to do with the creation of a system, a system that, uh, that is very intentional, uh, that ought to be very cohesive. There is a specific language 
jargon that is used in a system. Uh, so we are, we're looking at forming churches, but we also want to formulate, we want to create formulations, I think, uh, as, as Baptists that, that leave a lasting legacy. And that's what I think of when I think of this word heritage, is leaving a lasting legacy. What is our legacy? In fact, in IMB world, I've learned that we refer to places like here as legacy work. Because the presence of Southern Baptist missionaries who have come out of, are, are come out of Southern Baptist churches in the United States uh, through the coordination of the, the ministry of the Southern Baptist Convention called the International Mission Board, uh, they, we have, a, we have a, 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 a legacy that is, has been left. And I'm particularly sensitive to that at this moment because I have three sons and one of whom just next Tuesday, is going to enter into what we would call Form 4 here in the United States, we would say his senior year. And suddenly, those realities are setting in. And I suddenly am uh, forced to realize why my father shed tears even after we left the house. And, how, and why he had some of those moments where he regretted things that he said or things he did not do. Because time is fleeting, and if you are in a situation where you have a, a child who is nearing uh, leaving the nest, it's, it's, it's hard. And those are, this is my first one, and it's, it's already getting hard. We don't like to talk about it. He's all excited. Uh, fortunately, we see the, the grace of God uh, on his life. Uh, uh, he is born again, and, and God has called him into ministry. And he's planning on going to Boyce College, which is a... Uh, undergraduate program of the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. Uh, so I'm very excited about, about his future and what God is going to teach him and how God is going to use him. But the reality remains, what legacy have I left? Have I loved him well? Have I loved the Lord well before him? Have I learned well? And have I taught him to learn well? Have I lived well? Have I been the father that God has called me to be? Have I been the husband to their mother that God has called me to be? Have, have I uh, labored well? Do they see me doing uh, what God has called me to do with integrity? Or do they see laziness? Have I uh, lived well, learned well? Have I led well? Have I made the right kinds of decisions, not just for my family, but in, in churches where I have served and in the ministry where I am now? And ultimately, have I left well? Because that's part of the missionary task is that, that we leave well. And so our legacy, it, it really incorporates all of those things. And so I, I want to stop talking. And actually, unfortunately, it's not me. Uh, I'm not stopping talking. You're going to hear me on the video. But uh, I want to show you, uh, I want you to see the pictures of where you serve and hear the stories of your colleagues in this room, of what God has done in laying foundations and formulations of these institutions. Throughout missions history in Africa, leadership training holds a premier place. From the beginning, Baptist missionaries of the International Mission Board have provided theological training through Bible schools, decentralized theological education, theological education by extension, and seminaries. From the simple beginnings in West Africa, to today's institutions sprinkled across all of Sub-Saharan Africa, Baptists are responsible for laying the foundation and formulation of theological education at multiple levels. The first institution started by Baptist missionaries is the Nigerian Baptist Theological Seminary located in Obamashaw. It began in 1898, making it older than all Southern Baptist seminaries in the United States except for the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary in Louisville, Kentucky. The Nigerian Baptist Theological Seminary grew from what started as a preacher's training class on May the 3rd, 1898, to become a citadel of theological education today. The seminary was the first tertiary institution in Nigeria to award degrees in 1950. It has one of the best theological institutional libraries in the whole of Africa, with over 34,000 volumes of textbooks and 191 journal titles. The school offers curricula in the areas of theology, religious education, church music, and missiology, 
up to postgraduate levels, including doctoral programs in theology and religious education. Surprisingly, more than half a century followed before Baptist missionaries launched the next seminary. The Baptist Theological Seminary at Kaduna began quite modestly in 1948 with the ministry of Dr. and Mrs. Charles Knight. They were the first Baptist missionaries to reside north of the river Niger. In 1953, the school began a formal course of study. The school moved to its present location in 1956, and in 1957, the first classroom block was completed and commissioned. In 1962, the school's name was changed from Hausa Baptist Pastor School to Baptist Pastor School at Kaduna. The Baptist Pastor School was upgraded to the present status Baptist Theological Seminary in 1994. Tragedy struck the seminary in 2000 when Muslim fundamentalists attacked and burned the school, causing it to lose all its academic and administrative documents, its library, and worse yet, the lives of some of its students. The Baptist Theological Seminary at Kaduna currently runs academic programs including Diploma in Theology, Bachelor of Theology, Master of Divinity, and Master of Theology in various fields, and a Master of Arts in Religious Education. Preparation is underway to commence the award of Doctor of Ministry. Baptist missionaries Rev. Dr. and Mrs. W. H. Carson founded the Baptist College of Theology in Eku in 1945. In 1967, other Baptist missionaries introduced a three-year academic program, which began in 1968. In 1980, Reverend and Mrs. P.E. Ofwoku, the first indigenous principal, cited the school on its current location. Since 1945, the seminary has been offering courses at the certificate level. The Nigerian Baptist Convention accredited the school to award the Diploma in Theology in 1994. In 1999, the school was granted to award the Bachelor of Theology degree, thus becoming the second theological institution in the convention to award a bachelor degree. In the year 2005, the institution upgraded from Baptist College of Theology to Baptist Theological Seminary, making Eku the third seminary of the Nigerian Baptist Convention. The seminary offers the following programs, Certificate in Theology, Diploma in Religious Education, Diploma in Theology, Bachelor of Arts in Religious Studies, Bachelor of Religious Education, Bachelor of Theology, and Master of Divinity. The Baptist College of Theology, located in Jos, is an academic institution owned and operated by the Nigerian Baptist Convention. The college was established between the years of 1989 and 1990 by four Baptist associations. The primary purpose of the college is to provide theological education and pastoral training for those who are called to work in churches, schools, and other aspects of denominational work. The mission statement of the college is to train leaders to serve God and humanity for effective kingdom growth. Since its establishment, the Baptist College of Theology has graduated over 1,000 pastors who are now pastoring Baptist and non-Baptist churches in and outside of Nigeria and on mission fields. Programs of the college include Diploma in Theology, Certificate in Theology, Certificate in Practical Ministry, and a part-time program of continuing education for a Certificate of Religious Studies. The college also has a very strong women's training department and provides a preschool for the children under age six. The mission to Ghana began in 1947. Initially, close ties between Nigeria and Ghana and the predominance of the Yoruba work meant that pastors went to Nigeria for training. In 1954, the Nigerian Baptist Mission proposed a pastor's school in Kumasi, Ghana. In 1956, missionary W.A. Poe announced the inauguration of the Gold Coast Baptist Pastor's School. In 1960, the pastor's school moved to a new campus at Abuakwa and officially became the Ghana Baptist Seminary. Nigerian Baptist Theological Seminary provided the accreditation to the school shortly thereafter. During the 1960s, economic and political chaos shook Ghana and the seminary. The mission reduced its subsidy, a coup d'etat in 1967 created political and economic uncertainty, and the Compliance Order of 1969 forced undocumented foreigners to leave, including thousands of Yorubas, approximately 80% of the members of the Baptist Convention of Ghana. Ongoing tension between the convention and the mission over subsidies finally erupted in 1986. The convention split in two factions, one of which sided with the mission. The seminary continued to operate under the direction of the International Mission Board. 
the two convention factions reconciled in 1992. The seminary evolved into the School of Theology and Ministry of Ghana Baptist University College in 2006. School of Theology and Ministry programs include Diploma in Theology, Bachelor of Theology, and Master of Arts in Ministry. When Liberian Baptists formed their convention in 1880, they were intentional in the hope that education would be an important part of their lives. They believed then and now that the gospel is best served in cooperation of all human faculties, heart, soul, strength, and mind. Steps toward Baptist educational institutions in Liberia began in 1887 with the establishment of Ricks Institute in Virginia. Other schools, primary and secondary in focus, followed. Finally, the dream of 1880 included a seminary. In the late 1960s, Liberia Baptist Missionary and Educational Convention President Rev. Dr. William R. Tolbert, Jr. called for such a school to be instituted. Rev. Bradley D. Brown, a Southern Baptist missionary, quickly focused upon the necessity of leadership for a central Baptist Bible training center for Liberia. In 1969, the Liberia Baptist Missionary and Educational Convention, with cooperative effort of the then Southern Baptist Mission in Liberia, gave birth to that Baptist Training Center. The Liberia Baptist Theological Seminary was opened formally during a special convocation service in March 1976. The seminary obtained full accreditation for its degree programs from the Accrediting Council for Theological Education in Africa in 1983. Programs include the Bachelor of Theology and Bachelor of Religious Education degrees. The Biblical Baptist Institute of Benin is a work of the Baptist Church of Benin, which was born thanks to the sustained effort of the Southern Baptist Mission, which arrived in Benin in 1970. The work of the missionaries resulted in the planting of several local churches in the south of the country. In 1996, the mission determined that the church in Benin was mature enough at the national level to take care of all their plans. Joining the Union of Benin Baptist Protestant Churches, the then-expanding Baptist churches opted for autonomy in the management of their internal affairs and the initiative theological education for the promotion of national leaders in Benin. Thus, the idea of creating a biblical institute was adopted in 1997. The mission of the I-3B is to spiritually and intellectually train leaders for the church. Programs include, in local languages, Diploma of Knowledge in Theology, and a Certificate of Participation in Theology. And in French, there is the Certificate, Diploma, or Bachelor of Theology. Missionary John Mills arrived in Côte du Bois in 1966. Mills found a strong foundation of Nigerian Baptist churches. His primary experience in Nigeria allowed him to identify easily and work with those congregations during the first year. Following the arrival of two other missionary units in 1967, the fledgling mission targeted non-Nigerians, albeit with limited results. The first non-Nigerian congregation struggled for four years before its mission-constructed building was dedicated in 1971. The lack of language proficiency by missionaries and the lack of French language materials hindered much of the work. In the 1970s, the Côte d'Ivoire Baptist Mission expanded its personnel, ministries, and locations. A cooperative agreement with the West African Baptist School of Theology in Togo provided theological education by extension for church leaders. The Baptist Convention of Côte d'Ivoire was established in late 1984. Theological education by extension received greater attention with a significant increase in enrollment. The Baptist Institute of Pastoral Formation came out of this movement. In the first decade of the 2000s, the political situation erupted violently. The consequent instability and civil war provoked the mass departure of missionaries, particularly those stationed outside of the capital. All stations were abandoned except for Abidjan and a small village in the east of the country. In 1964, missionaries Clayton and Helen Bond opened work in Francophone West Africa when they transferred from Ghana to Togo. In 1971, Bill Bullington founded a pastor school at the outskirts of Lome. Eventually, the small school became the hub of theological education in Francophone West Africa. In 1975, the Missions Francophone Conference created a theological education program for the Francophone countries exclusive in French. The Togo School was renamed the West African Baptist School of Theology, 
also known in short as ESBITAL, and made it the accrediting institution of the decentralized programs. In 1999, the governance of the school passed from IMB to the four dominant Baptist conventions, that is Togo, Benin, Burkina Faso, and Côte d'Ivoire. Since 2008, ESPITAL has worked to diversify its training programs. A semi-residential regime is available for the Bachelor of Theology program for people who are far and cannot move to settle in Lome. The Light Certificate program is designed to train Christians for various work in the church in order to meet the needs of churches. In 2014, the school launched a distance learning program beginning with the Certificate of Basic Theological Knowledge. In all, the programs include a Bachelor of Theology, Certificate of Fundamental Theological Knowledge, Certificate in Holistic Child Development, Certificate in Counseling, and a Certificate in Missions. Simultaneous to the work in West Africa, Baptists in other parts of Sub-Saharan Africa were also implementing strategies for theological education. As far back as 1954, discussions began within Baptist churches in the Western Cape and within the Baptist Union of South Africa for a theological college to be established to meet the needs of churches in the Western Cape. In 1972, the Baptist Union approved a motion that a Western Province branch of the Baptist Theological College of South Africa be established in Cape Town, which would admit students of all races. A college committee was soon appointed. This later developed into the college, which over the years has played a formative role in the growth and development of the seminary. By 1976, the student body had increased to 10, and a full-time college secretary was appointed. As student population continued to grow, the search for a suitable home commenced. A two-and-a-half-acre site in Bridgetown was obtained at nominal cost from the Cape Town City Council. The new college building was opened on 16th February, 1980. In 1982, the Western Cape Baptist Theological College was granted its autonomy and was officially constituted as the Baptist Theological College, Cape Town. From 1993, the name was changed to Cape Town Baptist Seminary. The programs of the seminary include a Bachelor of Ministry, a Bachelor of Theology, and the Pulse Program, which is Cape Town Baptist Seminary's attempt to take theological education to the local church. The Rhodesian Baptist Mission launched the African Baptist Theological Seminary in 1955. By 1983, the name had changed to Baptist Theological Seminary of Zimbabwe. From its inception, the seminary principal governed the school with funding and personnel provided by the Baptist Mission of Zimbabwe. In 1972, a new pattern of governance began with the creation of a board of governors made up of mission and national convention representatives. In the early 1990s, the board of governors amended the constitution to include only one member of the Baptist Mission. The seminary remained the default regional seminary. However, the seminary aligned itself closely with theologically liberal U.S. churches and bodies. Efforts by the Baptist Fellowship to address these problems met strong resistance by seminary leadership. Yet, a new Board of Governors changed the school's charter to require all faculty and staff to adhere to the Baptist Faith and Message 2000, a move which ultimately led to the removal of the principal of the school who held liberal views. In 2015, International Mission Board missionaries Nick and Kendra Moore and their family were appointed to revitalize the seminary. The breakup of the Central African Federation prompted a reevaluation of theological education by the Baptist missions. In April 1966, the Zambia Baptist Mission charged Tom Small with establishing and directing a Bible school or seminary. In 1967, a three-year secondary certificate program was introduced. Classes met at the Baptist building while construction was underway at the new campus in Lusaka. In the fall of 1968, the new campus opened. In 1982, ACTIA accredited the secondary level program. The secondary level certificate program stood as the mainstay of the seminary until the 1990s when the post-secondary program began to grow. Throughout much of the seminary's history, the International Mission Board funded nearly all of the operating budget. In 1996, the IMB implemented a decreasing subsidy plan. By 2010, the IMB no longer provided operating funds. The school developed its own financial base from student fees, endowment funds, rental income, banana sales, and donations. The Baptist Seminary promotes local leadership training through the Bible schools. 
At present, there are multiple Bible schools located all around Zambia that are recognized by the seminary. These schools offer a basic program of study in the Bible and other practical courses based on God's Word. In all, the programs offered at the seminary are Certificate of Theology, Advanced Certificate of Theology, Diploma of Theology, Bachelor of Theology, and the Seminary Wives Program. While Bible schools in Malawi date back to 1961, advanced training entailed relocation to a seminary in Zimbabwe, Zambia, or Tanzania. During the 1980s and early 1990s, the mission provided two scholarships per year for students to attend one of the other institutions. Dissatisfied with this arrangement, the mission asked for its own seminary. The Baptist mission in Malawi sought to train its own pastors. In 1994, the Baptist Theological Seminary of Malawi was formed to offer certificate-level seminary training using the Decentralized Theological Education System. The faculty began with two IMB missionaries, Sam Upton and Van Thompson. In September 1997, a diploma in theology program was begun. In the early years, the International Mission Board provided 90% of the funding with the remaining 10% furnished by tuition and fees. As elsewhere, a decreasing subsidy process began in the late 1990s. The Oklahoma Baptist Convention Partnership in the early 2000s decade provided significant assistance in the development of the campus. In addition, German Baptists subsidized both the seminary and the national convention. In 2010, legal processes were put into motion to finalize the transfer of the seminary property to the national convention. The programs offered in Malawi are Certificate in Theology, Diploma in Theology, and Bachelor of Theology. Botswana has around 26 Baptist churches in the entire country, but only about 15 of them have a pastor. In 2016, the Baptist Convention Seminary was launched, the first Baptist seminary in Botswana and the youngest of our Baptist-affiliated seminaries. The mission statement of the seminary is to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ by equipping students through educational training to serve the church and fulfill the Great Commission, to convey graciously and apply effectively the Christian worldview in all areas of culture and the human condition and to encourage and support the church in its redemptive work. The current program of study is the Certificate in Theology and Ministry. Following the example of Zimbabwe, in 1958, the Baptist Mission of East Africa charged missionary Samuel DeBorg and Earl Martin the task of establishing a regional seminary to serve Tanzania, Kenya, and Uganda. Located at the base of Mount Meru near Arusha, Tanzania, the Baptist Seminary of East Africa opened in 1962 with the board serving as principal. Later in 1982, the school changed its name to International Baptist Theological Seminary of Eastern Africa. The school has had a diverse and at times turbulent history. In 1989, the Baptist Mission of Tanzania combined theological education by extension, Bible schools, and the seminary branch program under a newly created Department of Decentralized Theological Education, in that same year, the seminary launched its first two extension centers in Tanzania. The branch system was a full-time cohort-type extension program. By the late 1980s, the school claimed a solid financial base with 25% of the budget coming from local resources. However, optimistic projections failed to materialize and substantial assistance from the International Mission Board continued. In 2002, Principal Harrison Olong orchestrated the transition of the seminary to a university. The following year, the name of the seminary officially changed to Mount Meru University. In 2005, the university received a certificate of full registration. By 2010, the student body had grown to 425 students, of which only 25 were in the theology department, most of whom were not Baptist. Due to spikes in tuition costs, by 2010, the branch program became the de facto seminary extending to all five regions in Tanzania. After a noted change in vision and purpose, the Baptist Convention of Tanzania just recently established the Tanzania Baptist Theological Seminary. According to the Mount Meru University website, the programs being offered are Diploma in Church Music, Diploma of Theology, Diploma in Christian Education, Bachelor of Christian Education, Bachelor of Theology, Bachelor of Education in Religious Education, Bachelor of Theology with Education. 
In the early 1970s, the East Africa Baptist Mission responded to sizable church growth, especially in Kenya, by establishing a TEE program. By 1980, the seminary in Arusha opened a secondary-level certificate program using a non-residential, intensive course format in Kenya at the Brackenhurst Conference Center. In 1982, the Council for Higher Studies in Religion accredited the school as a Center for External Theological Studies. In 1988, the seminary in Arusha recognized Kenya Baptist Theological College as autonomous. Financial self-sufficiency failed to develop in the years that followed as desired when the International Mission Board subsidy ended. In the last decade, the Baptist Convention of Kenya was given ownership of KBTC. Following the same course many other conventions have taken, the Baptist Convention has sought to transform KBTC into a Christian liberal arts university. In 2016, KBTC entered into collaboration with Mount Mary University to offer the Bachelor of Theology in a move towards accreditation with the Commission for University Education. KBTC has 66 Bible schools across Kenya that claim to relate to the college. However, recent scrutiny has revealed that most do not follow the curricula of the college. In 2018, the Board of Governors approved plans to reconstitute the college as Kenya Baptist Theological Seminary, to clarify our doctrinal identity as Baptist, streamline our programs around the gospel, revamp the semi-residential approach to education, implement a missional field education component, and pursue accreditation with ACTIA. Our current programs include a Certificate of Theology, a Diploma of Theology, and Bachelor of Theology. Following the rupture in the relationship between the Arusha Seminary and the Kenya branch, in 1988, IMB missionary Jack Frost launched a small school in Jinja, Uganda, which would become Uganda Baptist Seminary. In 1998, the seminary underwent an extensive reorganization with the transfer of missionary Vernon Sivage to the school. Switching to English and instruction, implementing the Bible Training Center for Pastors series as the core curriculum, and adopting an intensive cohort semi-residential program were among the radical changes. Explosive growth took place so that by 2010, the student body reached 324, and in 2013, enrollment reached 563 students in 20 classes, with students coming from Uganda, Tanzania, Kenya, Rwanda, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. In 2005, Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary initiated a master's level partnership with UBS, providing their Master of Theological Studies program. In 2006, the National Council for Higher Education awarded license to offer diploma-level degree, and in 2010, the same body awarded full accreditation for diploma education. Ten years later, UBS was awarded license to offer the accredited program of Bachelors of Theology. The faculty of UBS remained stable over the years compared to other Baptist institutions on the continent and recently the seminary achieved parity of African and expatriate professors. Former IMB personnel at the school strongly resisted nationalization and the elimination of IMB subsidy that ended in 2010. The school remained dependent on outside funding coming mostly from U.S. benefactors. However, the current administration has made great strides in addressing the issue, and the school is on a healthy path moving forward. UBS offers the following programs, Certificate of Theology, Diploma of Theology, Bachelor's of Theology, Master of Theological Studies. Another young institution in our Baptist fraternity is the Christian Leadership Institute of Rwanda. The Christian Leadership Institute is a bachelor's degree level program offered by New Creation Ministries, which is a world venture ministry. The purpose of the Christian Leadership Institute is to provide a transformational discipleship-based education that will train Christian leaders to think clearly about Scripture, to be grounded in their Christian faith, and to be able to fulfill the calling that God has placed upon their lives. They provide a high-quality academic experience with an emphasis on practicality while creating a space where God can work deep transformation in the lives of their students. The late Randy Arnett, from whose writings much of this history has been gleaned, concluded, God placed theological education in the hearts of missionaries. Whatever the context, God bless the vision and the sacrificial efforts of IMB missionaries and Africans alike. Indeed, the history is checkered. Conflict, difficulties, misunderstandings, and failure comprise this saga. 
but also within the pages of this chronicle, one witnesses moments of awe when a student starts a new church, when a backwards illiterate wife reads the scripture at a graduation ceremony, when a young graduate confronts syncretism with biblical truth. Indeed, Western influence resulted in less than perfectly contextualized training. The curriculum often addressed Western issues more than African questions. Some of the apparent trends caused distress. In particular, the secularization of the seminaries and the deviation from their original purpose of training Baptist pastors cast a shadow on the future. Yet in spite of all the weaknesses and failings, one must hail the missionaries and Africans who have trained Baptist leaders for that past half-century. Certainly the influence of these seminaries on Baptist work on the continent has yet to be fully known. One cannot count the thousands of pastors and leaders who owe their theological education to these institutions. The legacy continues. Indeed, the legacy continues. And so uh, I'm very much indebted to uh, the research and, and the, the love for this continent and its people uh, that Randy Arnett uh, left for us. In fact, uh, Kevin gave us what he called a gem uh, of, a, um, of a paper uh, that was uh, written by uh, Randy Arnett on the history of theological institutions uh, across um, Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, so I, I really appreciate uh, the work that he did. And uh, much of what you heard came from his research and the information that you uh, sent to me. So thank you as well. Uh, so as we think in terms of leaving this legacy and building on the past, uh, learning from the past, but, but thinking in terms of when it's time for me to pass the baton to the person uh, who, is, who is Kenyan and is uh, truly qualified by God's standards in his word, but thoroughly equipped academically, uh, doctrinally, and, 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 and the calling is there, and I hope that day comes very soon, that we ought to be working ourselves out of a job, so to speak, just like parents do. And we don't want our children to live off of us the rest of our lives as much as it might be hurtful for them to leave. We want to leave a legacy uh, that is lasting. And so I want us to, to think in terms of this first question here. I want you just to take a couple moments, just a few moments, and, and just turn to the people that are sitting next to you and, and discuss this statement here, or this question. What are three Baptist distinctives? Baptist distinctives, whether that be in form or in faith, belief or practice, but three things that you know in your context, this is what identifies a Baptist. Okay, so just take a few moments, maybe five minutes, just discuss that, and then I want to hear a few examples in just a moment. What is a clear Baptist, Baptist distinctive that defines at your seminary, in your context, this is what it means to be Baptist? Yes, sir. Authority of the Word of God above everything else. Very good. We, we are people of the book. I'd like to think that we still are. I hope that, that that's characteristic. Anyone over on this side? What's a specific distinctive. So autonomy does it mean, does not mean the same as not being accountable. I like that. We've heard that from Dr. Chuga today. Uh, Somebody in the middle. Yes, sir. Discipleship. Discipleship. All right. Maybe one more over here. Yes, sir. Missions. Missions. Outward instead of inward. Very good. Very good. Which is, which is why we have this particular uh, session the heritage that Baptists have had uh, on seminaries in an African context. It's directly because of the passion for missions uh, that drives us to make disciples of the nations. Uh, so very good. I have one more thing I would like for you to discuss, and this is a little bit more personal. But before I go to that screen, I, I want to preface it. I want to preface it with this. As I considered my own life in preparation for this, Uh, There were some very uh, solemn and sober moments as I thought through the legacy that I'm leaving, like I was mentioning at the beginning. Uh, And and specifically, I thought of of these three things. They 
They happen to all start with the letter L again, uh, but I don't know why I was in alliteration. I was stuck only on L's. Um, but anyway, um, just a moment here. And, and so they are, I would like for us to think about a lake, a lost tool, and a legacy. Now what I mean by that is, and in, in these are three, three key passages that God has used in my own life just recently, uh, including even at our training time, when we were talking uh, last month about being not just uh, those people who are the- theoreticians in the classroom, but practitioners. That we are teaching not by information overload b- or information transfer, but we are teaching by leading and living it out, that we are practicing the missionary task. And so I, I look back to a lake it was Lake Victoria. It was 22 years ago when I was resting on the side of Lake Victoria outside of Jinja, Uganda, and God specifically called me to be involved in His work among the nations. I like to think that a text of Scripture that reflects or encourages me is Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11, where there were fishermen on the lake and they were living their lives. And yet Jesus called them to come and follow him. And he said, what? I will make you fishers of men. The disciple-making task, the missionary task, it transforms us when we love God and we love others. The love of Christ controls us and it compels us to go to the nations and to and to stand firm on the word and to make disciples through intentional, um, intentional, contextualized teaching methods. And so it was very challenging for me as I prepared for this. Uh, but the text that referred to the lost tool it might be somewhat obscure is 2 Kings chapter 6 verses 1 through 7. And, and I, I do not believe that it is good hermeneutics to uh, allegorize that and try to make three points out of that text. I think the text is pretty plain that this was just a miraculous event where a, one of the sons of the prophets, uh, this group of people that we were introduced to in other texts, who were kind of like the first seminary. Uh, following uh, these older prophets, learning from them. They're living in community, and the number obviously had grown large. We want to see that happen, don't we? But they needed to, uh, to go and fell some trees. And so we know the story that one of the men is there, and he's using a borrowed cutting edge, an axe. And what happens as he is swinging that? Fortunately, it went that direction and not this direction, but the head of that axe, that cutting edge, it went into the Jordan River. He lost his cutting edge. Now, I will use that one. He lost his cutting edge. But it wasn't his cutting edge, and his remark is, oh, alas, what am I to do? For that was a borrowed tool. He lost what was entrusted him by someone else. And I hope you can see where I'm going with that. For we have been entrusted with the ministry of reconciliation. And we have been given, laid at our feet, literally is what Paul says. He's placed before us the message of reconciliation. And we're Christ's ambassadors. And he is speaking through us. In fact, as we keep going beyond chapter 5 of 2 Corinthians, we go into chapter 6, verse 1. Paul says this, and we are working together with him. And we are working together with each other. God is at work through our ministry of reconciliation. And that is the basis of theological education. Is the gospel message of reconciliation. We've been given that task. And because we fear the Lord... And because the love of Christ compels us, that is what we need to face right now. And that is this question. Have we lost our cutting edge? Have we abandoned, have we abandoned some of those clearly defined doctrinal distinctives that are from the Word of God, not just that make us Baptists, but that make us believers, that make us Uh, those who are truly being found faithful with the task that we've been entrusted to. So I want you to 
not necessarily take time to discuss this. Maybe you need to discuss this with the Lord. Maybe this is a time of confession. Maybe it's a time of reflection, of course, but it might mean that we need to confess. I was recently in a meeting with many of my colleagues in Bangkok, and I never will forget this moment when across the room of almost 900 people, there was weeping and there was pleading with the Father for forgiveness for various sins. It's a healthy thing for His body to confess, to humble themselves and to confess. So I want you to think about that. Have you, as an individual, lost that cutting edge that God has trusted to you? Not to cut people down to size as much as I want to do that to Mr. Olstein, right? But to, to do what? To sharpen, to sharpen those, those people that are coming to our institutions who are going to lead churches because we want them to be healthy churches. So we want them to be godly men. We want them to be men who are founded and, and are embracing the Word of God. And they're living it out faithfully and teaching it to others faithfully. What about you? Are there ways in which you or your institution have abandoned the heritage? Hitching, as I say, hitching your cart to the donkey that has money or following the path of least resistance or being influenced by the love of the things of this world more than the love of the Father. So I've mentioned a lake, I've mentioned a lost tool, but I want to close with talking about a legacy. It's the legacy of my father. His name was Gary Bledsoe. Seven years ago, uh, just a few days ago, uh, we, we remembered the, the day of his accident. My father was a follower of Jesus, he uh, felt called into ministry, but he ran from that. In fact, he ran to the military, joined the army, and was stationed in, in South Korea. And he ran from the Lord in that calling most of his adult life. And he uh, surrendered to that call. Isn't that funny that we say surrendered? Uh, we should say, I joyfully give my life to that call. When he was uh, uh, retired. And so uh, my father had a heart for sharing the gospel with people. And I remember that he had called me one Saturday in July, and he said, Jimmy, I would like for you to pray for me because I'm going to, have, I'm, I'm going to become a fishing buddy, a fishing partner with your Uncle Dave. And we all knew that Uncle Dave was lost. He did not have a relationship with Christ. Uh, his life reflected that. He was hard-hearted and hard-headed. And my dad said, please pray for me that I have the opportunity and the boldness to share with Dave the gospel. We received a phone call early that morning, the day of the fishing event. It was my younger brother, and he said, Jimmy, there's been a terrible accident. They found our Uncle Dave's body floating on the top of the water, but they cannot find Dad. You need to come quickly. Well, I live four hours away. And somehow, by the grace of God and His mercy, I made it in like two and a half hours. But by the time we got there, the, the emergency team, uh, the, the dive team, they, they had discovered my dad's body. It was submerged, and it was at the bottom of the lake. It was a horrible day. It was a horrible day. Not having any answers at all. What happened? Only left to speculation. But then we had this happen. We had the local police department call us and say, we've done an investigation. There's no sign of any kind of foul play. But we want you to come and pick up his things. Things that we retrieved that were inside the boat, some things that we found uh, in that lake. And just before we left that room, the uh, police officer stopped and said, oh, don't forget his shoes. And I said, his shoes? Where were his shoes? And she said, those were actually the only things that were left in the boat. You see, my dad, he took his shoes off in order to jump in the water 
to save a man who was lost and was dying. And he lost his life in the process. It's very common when two people have drowned and one body is on the surface of the water and the other is submerged, that the one that was submerged was pushed under by the one in who in his panic was trying to gasp for air. And God spoke to me so clearly in that moment. Your dad gave his life to save a man who was lost. What are you going to give up? Because I had lost my cutting edge. I had been called 20 something years ago to be a missionary. And it took 20 years to come back to the place where God called me. May it not be said of us in our institutions that we have lost that cutting edge, that we've abandoned the mission, the task that he's called us to. And may we be willing to give whatever it needs to be, to get rid of whatever it is that's keeping us from doing that, from laying our lives down like those brothers and sisters who are on the wall at the International Mission Board's International Learning Center, many of whom died on this continent and they packed their belongings into wooden boxes that were actually their caskets because they knew that they were going to give their lives for that cause. That's the heritage that we have, a heritage of loving well, of living well, of laboring well, of leading well, and of leaving well. So I want to pray for you and with you as we get ready to dismiss for lunch, but also just to let those thoughts penetrate our hearts and minds. Father, I thank you for the legacy that you, that you left for me and my father. Those are big shoes to fill. And I know that I am so prone to wonder from the God that I say I love. And I know that I am prone to get busy with all kinds of good things and not, not labor well for what is the main thing. So Father, I pray that you will focus my heart and my mind and my my head and my, my hands as well, Lord, to the task of making disciples. And I pray for my brothers and sisters in this room, God, that you will that you will reveal to them, Lord, areas, perhaps ways in which they too have perhaps lost the cutting edge and maybe aren't doing the task that you've called them to with excellence. Maybe they've been distracted by things as well. Maybe their love is in the things of this world rather than you and that can't be. God, I pray that you reveal to us and you move in us and you cleanse us and you change us and you sharpen us to make us useful tools in your hands. Tools of righteousness. That we will be like arrows that have been sharpened and that we will go out and we will hit the target that you are aiming for of the people that you will call out from every nation, tribe, and tongue that you will make to be your people redeemed, your worshipers, So may we be found faithful in leaving our legacy well. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.